In this video, I want to talk about one of the parts of the Colombian Western operation that the operators find really interesting, and that's the, the cusp turn that goes up the Slocan subdivision to uh, Slocan City, then gets on the rail barge, goes up to Rosebury, and continues on the Caslo subdivision to the cusp. So this video will focus on that one job. This Slocan and Caslo subdivisions with the rail service, the rail barge service in between, is one of the things that got me very, very interested in the Southern British Columbia Railway area in the first place. It was through magazines such as this, the Trains Magazine on the train that took the barge to work, these great books by Jerry Dokeson, um, the Fairbanks Morris books, and the wonderful pictures in J.F. Garden's book, The Crow and the Kettle, that really got me excited about the whole area. So we want to spend the video today sort of explaining a little bit about how the job works. We'll start at the Nelson Diesel House at, this, at the division point of Nelson on the boundary subdivision. And we'll continue along the boundary uh, till we get to the junction at Slocan, South Slocan. Then we'll head up the Slocan Valley uh, to Slocan City where the Triangle Forest Products Mill is. We'll see the job switching there, get on the rail barge, and we'll continue on up to Rosebury. This video is uh, a partner to a Canadian Railway Modeler article which should be on the shelves uh, in August and September of 2012. Our power for today is going to be H-Liner, 8727. You can see at the Nelson Diesel House that there's a lot of FM equipment here today. Freight 87, which is the craft switcher, is going to be out before us with H-Liners 8717 and 8718. We're going to be running as second 87 all the way to Slocan Junction. Our power, the H1644, is actually facing in the wrong direction, so the hostlers are going to have to run the power around the Y and Nelson to get it going the right direction for our freight. Our caboose, 437249, is waiting for us beside the diesel house. Here we are coupling up onto our freight on track number two. We'll pump up the air and do a brake test and then be on our way. The grades for our freight today are actually quite mild, about 1% down to Slocan Junction, South Slocan, and then 1% up. Once we get to Rosebury, however, we'll be starting a 2.2% climb up to Summit Lake. We're passing the Nelson West Switcher, which is busy working the clean-out tracks at the west end of Nelson.
We're going to cross the Kootenai River now on the bridge just to the east of Tagum. This bridge is just to the west of Groman Narrows, which is where Kootenai Lake narrows down and becomes Kootenai River. The series of bridges here is a favorite of many of the rail friends. It comprises three half-girder bridges over a secondary channel in the river and then a, a large island. Following that are two through half-girder bridges and a smaller island, and then finally two more half-girder bridges, a 150-foot through truss bridge, and then a deck girder bridge. The Slocan branch leaves the boundary sup here at South Slocan Junction. Our train is officially going to terminate and we'll pick up orders that create the new train that takes us up to Caslow and up to the Caslow sub and then eventually to Nacusp. We're going to pick up some wood chip hoppers here. These are empties that were pulled from the uh, Selgar mill by the craft job yesterday. We'll take them up to the Triangle Forest Products Mill where they'll be filled up and then we'll bring them back tomorrow on our return trip. We've got our orders creating us as extra 8727 North on the Slocan sub. It takes us all the way to Rosebury. We'll pick up some more orders at Rosebury for the, to take us all the way through to Nacusp. The orders also tell us that we're going to meet work extra 8711 at Rosebury that's been busy dumping fill on the route up to Summit Lake. The scenery in the Slocan Valley is beautiful, and right now we're passing under the watchful eye of Frog Peak at the Crescent Valley section of the line. There are many little hamlets on the Slocan subdivision all the way up to Slocan City. This is Valakin. It's the home of a log reload. We're passing over Lemon Creek now. It's a 100-foot pony truss bridge. Your narrator and his golden retriever Murphy ran into a black bear here, and it looks like the same is happening to another hiker. The large Triangle Pacific sawmill at Slocan City is the primary reason for the continued use of the Slocan branch. Here we're going to drop off some empty box cars and hoppers, chip hoppers, and a few miscellaneous cars for other customers, and we'll pull the loads and organize them for our return journey.
8727 is busy loading some of the empties onto the rail barge. The slip rides on rail bogies all the way down into the water and the locomotive can be used to pull the slip in backwards and forwards which can be used to adjust the height of the slip for the lake level as it rises and falls through the year. A similar but slightly different slip will await us at Rosebury. 8727 is now loading the other track on the barge. The tracks were worked fully one at a time with no attempt made to load the cars one at a time on alternate ways as was done on other rail marine operations. The speed restrictions however needed to be carefully monitored and it was very rare to see a, a locomotive run faster than two to five miles an hour as it was loading onto the barge. The trip up Slocan Lake is about two and a half hours and it's beautiful in terms of the scenery that's seen so we can enjoy our trip as we go up the lake. We're now unloading our barge at Rosebury. We can see that there are cars waiting for us on the slip. Those cars were brought up on a barge the previous day and then winches were used to pull them off the barge and onto the slip. We will rearrange our cars in the Rosebury yard and then make our way to the cusp. We're busy unloading the other side of the barge now and we can see 8711, the work extra, coming in into town with its side dump cars. We're now ready to make our trip over Summit Lake and down into Nacusp. Scenically, the line to Rosebury is nearly finished. However, beyond Rosebury, up Summit Lake and down to Nacusp, it's still plywood. Eventually, I'll get to finish these things, I hope. And then the whole trip from Nelson all the way to Nacusp can be recreated in N scale to the satisfaction of all the operators. So, in operations, the uh, switcher continues on to Nacusp. The area from Summit Lake to Nacusp hasn't been finished yet scenically. So that ends the video today. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me at mark.dance at gmail.com. Thanks very much.